Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I cover all things Fusion 360. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to hit that red subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified of when I release new Fusion tutorials every single week. By the end of this episode, episode number eight of Fusion Fridays, you'll know exactly what those little icons mean when you're editing a T-spline form in the sculpt environment. Now the most common command you'll use in the T-spline or sculpt environment is the edit form command. To get to the edit form command, simply right click on your selection of faces, edges, points, or a combination of them, and then select edit form. Now you can also access the edit form command from the modify dropdown list or by using the keyboard shortcut letter S, which will bring up the search box, and then you can type out edit form. Then after selecting edit form, you'll be presented with the manipulator that has an assortment of tools. So let's go ahead and take a look at what each icon does. Now the first icon or the arrow icon here allows you to move your selected entities in a single axis direction. Essentially the entities you have selected can be pushed or pulled along the X, Y, or Z axis. If I click and drag on this Z axis arrow, you'll see that I can pull it up or push it back down. And I can also type in a specific distance in the dimension box. Now one thing to note is that when you move a face on a surface, the surrounding faces move to maintain continuity. So you'll see that as I pull this face up again, the further I pull on the face, the more the surrounding faces are going to be pulled up along with it. And remember that the single axis arrows will work if I were to select a face, a vertex or edge, a point, or a combination of the three. Now the next icon or the slider icon, which is the circular arcs that are located just outside the single axis arrows, allow you to rotate the selected geometry around a single axis. So just like the single axis arrows, the rotation sliders will follow along the X, Y, or Z axis. Now the rotation sliders will also work on a selected face, edge, point, or a combination of the three. You'll also notice that as I drag the rotation slider around, it will naturally snap to every five degrees and it will also snap into place at every 90 degrees. And of course, you can also type in an exact degree in the dimension box. With that said, you need to be extremely careful when using the rotate feature as self intersecting faces or geometry that twists through itself will cause errors and your model will not be able to convert back to a solid body. Now the next icon or this rounded white square is the planar direction icon. Selecting and holding down the rounded square will allow you to move the selected geometry along the plane parallel to a given plane in the world space. So let's break this down a bit. So you can simply click and select the square and move it freely around the plane. Now by default, the edit form manipulator uses the world space coordinates or these XYZ planes, but you can also use the view space by selecting it under the coordinate space section of the edit form dialog box. Now the view space is based on the camera view. So if I select view space in the edit form dialog box, you'll notice that no matter how I rotate the sculpted form, the planar direction icon is always based on the view. I can also select the local space icon or the third option here, which will leave the planar direction icon based on the normal direction of the surface. So you'll see if I view the object from another angle, the planar direction icon will move along with the object. The next icon is the single direction scaling icon or the straight lines, which allow you to scale the selected geometry in one direction. 
Now, like the other icons, the single direction scaling icon also works on a selected face, edge, point, or a combination of the three. Now, to remember what this icon does, just remember that the straight line next to the single direction arrow is also a single direction action. Now, the only difference is that the arrow moves the selected geometry, whereas the line scales the selected geometry. If I selected a face, select the straight line, and drag it upwards, you'll see that it increased the size of the face or scaled it to be larger. And of course, if I move my cursor back down or towards the middle of the model, it will decrease the scale or size of the selected geometry. The second to last icon is the corner line that allows you to scale in a planar direction. Now to remember what this icon does, Simply remember that the roundedness correlates to the rounded square, as both of these icons work in the planar directions. If I were to select any of the geometry, including edges, faces, points, or a combination of the three, and I click and drag on the planar direction scaling icon, you'll see that it scales the size of the selected geometry along the plane. Now, similar to the rounded square or the planar direction icon, we can change the coordinate space to move along a desired plane other than the X, Y, or Z axis. Now, one other important thing to note is that the planar direction only works in two directions, as indicated by these little arrows that show up when your cursor is on top of the icon. The last icon is the circle located directly in the center of all these manipulators. Now this circle is the universal scaling icon which allows you to select any geometry and move the mouse left or right to scale the geometry in all directions. The very last thing that I want to point out in this video is that you can create new faces or add geometry while using any of these manipulator tools. To extrude new faces as you manipulate geometry, simply hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows. For example, if I select a face here and hold down the Option key on my Mac, you'll notice as I pull the single direction arrow up, it not only pulls the shape up, but it also creates new faces on the sides. So I'll go ahead and hit Command Z to undo and I'll simply drag the arrow up again to show you the difference. So you can see here just how powerful holding down the Option or Alt key can be. It can make all the difference in the outcome of your model. If you try to use the Option slash Alt key, you may end up with an error message stating that the extrude operation can be applied only on manifold surfaces. Now you can essentially think of non-manifold surfaces as geometry that cannot exist in the real world because they're either not touching or they have no real thickness to them. For example, I'll select an edge here and hold down the Option key on my Mac. Now if I try to drag the single direction arrow, you'll notice that I get the manifold error because I cannot realistically extrude an edge, because if you take a look at it, it really wouldn't have any thickness to it. So to summarize, you'll wanna get familiar with these icons in order to master the sculpt environment. You have to get used to being able to know which icon is gonna manipulate the form in the direction that you're trying to go. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.